Texas Live now. Mona, first of all, how are you feeling this morning? Well, uh, besides these two casts and learning how to put my clothes on and to brush my teeth with these two casts, I'm okay. Uh, it's just unbelievable what happened to you. Um, give us the scenario. You're standing in a crowd of other people and you're watching things unfold as a journalist. And what happens next? Well, I was standing on the front line where protesters have, have had this confrontation with the security forces and all of a sudden some riot police crossed over onto our side and some of the people who were standing around me managed to get away but I was cornered by four or five riot police and they beat me with their sticks and that's how I got the break on my left arm and on my right hand and then they dragged me beyond what was basically this kind of front line into this no man's land all the way to the interior ministry which was close by and as they were taking me there I experienced a terrible sexual assault. I mean, it was basically just hands everywhere, groping my breasts, hands between my legs. I lost count of the number of hands that tried to get into my trousers that I was trying to push off. Um, they were calling me all kinds of terrible names. I fell to the ground at one point and they dragged me by my hair. But I want to emphasize that what happened to me is not just unique to me. This is the kind of brutality that was one of the main catalysts for the Egyptian revolution. As an Egyptian, I came back to Tahrir Square because I wanted to be here with fellow Egyptians to basically say that this revolution will continue and will not be hijacked by the Supreme Council of the Armed Forces and it will not be hijacked by these brutal security forces who beat me and beat so many other Egyptians. Um, when you were eventually taken into custody, you were held for 12 hours. At times you were blindfolded. What sorts of questions? What did they want to get out of you exactly? Well, they claimed while they were, I was held in two places. I was held at first at the Ministry of the Interior, which is right where I was grabbed and, and beaten. I, out, just outside of it, I was grabbed and beaten. Once inside, I was not physically abused at all. But it was basically four or five hours of just these. I, at first, I wasn't really sure what they wanted. They kept saying, I didn't have my identification papers on me because I left them in Tahrir Square so that they wouldn't get lost on, on the front lines. So they said that they wanted to make sure that I was who I said I was. And it took them five hours, and apparently they, they didn't determine that. But I don't believe that was the reason they kept me that long. I think perhaps because they found my files in the Ministry of, the, of Interior, and I was a journalist in Egypt for a long time. So anyway, I don't know why they kept me so long in, in the Interior Ministry, and then they handed me over to military intelligence. At first I refused to go because I said I'm a civilian and I shouldn't have to be questioned by the military. But they, they insisted I go, and at military intelligence I was kept for about four or five hours again, two of which I spent blindfolded. And again, the questions about my identity. And then after a while, I just refused to answer their questions anymore. So, I mean, I can't really tell you what they wanted during those um, almost 10 to 12 hours, whether it was just sheer and utter incompetence or if it's because they realized that I'm a journalist who has a past of covering human rights violations. I don't know. And they just wanted to terrify you. I mean, you're, it's just, it's just mind-boggling. We have a picture you took of your hand at the time and your hand is clearly swollen. Did they at all acknowledge that you were physically hurt? Did they offer any help to you? Not at all. Every hour I would tell them I am in a lot of pain. I think my hand and my arm is broken. And I would show them the bruises getting bigger and bigger. And they said, you know, they said, you know, move your fingers. Oh, they're not broken. They're not broken. And I said, no, I'm in a lot of pain. <coughs> Excuse me. And they said, well, we'll get you a doctor. And every hour they'd say, we'll get you a doctor, and they never did. But again, I want to emphasize that what happened to me, and this is why I'm here speaking to you, is just the tip of the iceberg of the kind of abuse and brutality that ordinary Egyptians face every day. I'm a journalist. I have a presence in the media. I'm here speaking to CNN. There are countless other nameless thousands of Egyptians who face this every day and don't have a voice in the media. So I want to use my story to remind the world that the Egyptian police brutality continues and that the Egyptian revolution continues and that us Egyptians who are determined to make our revolution succeed will not be silent and whether it takes my voice or the voices of everybody in Tahrir Square we will make this revolution continue until Egypt is under civilian leadership and we end military rule and we end police brutality. And many Egyptians would so agree with you that you have to get your story up because if this had happened in the United States you'd be filing a complaint today or talking to a lawyer. Do Egyptians have any recourse, anything they can do if this sort of thing happens to them? Well, I will be taking legal recourse. I have consulted an attorney and I have documented all the injuries that I've suffered 
got a cop got my x-rays and everything and I will be taking legal recourse I'm still consulting with the with the attorney as I said to determine exactly what we're going to do but unfortunately because of these decades of abuse and brutality and the fear that the security forces instilled in so many Egyptians many people don't know what their rights are and again this is one of the reasons that the revolution started in in January on the 25th we have a long history of very courageous and brave human rights activists that have tried to get the word out about what our rights are under such abuse and brutality and I hope as an Egyptian and I know that the thousands who will come to Tahrir Square today I hope that the free Egypt that we will create that is free of military rule and free of police brutality will be an Egypt that respects everybody's human rights everybody regardless of gender or faith or sexual orientation but an Egypt free of abuse and brutality thank you so much for being with us this morning and, and having the courage to tell your story we so appreciate your efforts Mona El Tahawi thank you so much for being with us on American Morning